Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. The rabble among them had a strong craving. And the Israelites also wept again and said, if only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all at the entrances of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all these people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I give birth to them that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a sucking child to the land that you promised on oath to their ancestors? Where am I to get meat to give to all these people? For they come weeping to me and say, give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry all these people alone, for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once. If I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, gather for me 70 of the elders of Israel whom you know to be elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of the meeting. 
and had them take their place there with you. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in a cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied. But they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other Medad. And the spirit rested on them. They were among those who registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. And so they prophesied in the camp. And the young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him. For no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. 
For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell where the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You're either with us or you're against us. George W. Bush. You're either with us or you're against us. Hillary Clinton. You're either with us or you're against us. Benito Mussolini. George Orwell, Star Wars, Beauty and the Beast. And how do I know all of these references? Because there is a Wikipedia page bearing the name, you're either with us or you're against us. So what about the contrapositive? Whoever is not against us is for us. That's what Jesus says in our gospel reading today, but there's no Wikipedia page for that. And why might that be the case? Both sayings can be true depending on context. So why do we seem to gravitate toward the more exclusionary one? Well, as always, those disciples give us a clue into our own behavior. Today we see them focused on who's in and who's out. We're big fans of that game, always have been. Who's in, who's out, and what do we do when membership status is unclear? The issue is that an outsider is using the name of Jesus to cast out demons. He understands there is power in that name, and it's working for him. But he hasn't bought in like the disciples have. He hasn't joined their group and signed up for all that Jesus requires. And we know that Jesus requires a lot. At this point in the gospel narrative, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem, and he's been raising the bar on what discipleship means. The last will be first. Take up your cross. Be a servant of all. And the one we just heard, tear out your eye and cut off your hand if they cause you to sin. Being followers of Jesus requires commitment and sacrifice and shared convictions about fundamental issues of human existence. It means prioritizing our relationship with God as the most important relationship in our lives. This was true for the disciples. It was true for Mark's first century audience. And of course, it's true for us. And think for a minute about Mark's audience in particular. He was writing around the year 70 AD. Jesus was gone. 
But like us, his followers were trying to act in his name. They were trying to do what he would do, live like he would live, and in effect, continue his presence in the world. As we know, Jesus' spirit lives through his followers. That's us. Mark's audience is wrestling with the implications of that responsibility. The church is still being formed and shaped, maintaining boundaries and clear expectations of members is important to living as the body of Christ. So someone like this rogue exorcist claiming to work for Jesus without being part of the community would be seen as an interloper, a threat to the survival of orthodoxy. And as the disciples point out, he hasn't paid the proper franchise fee. He doesn't even know Jesus, but somehow he's harnessing Jesus' power to cast out demons, and that doesn't seem fair. But when is the good news ever comported with our notions of fairness? Mercifully, Jesus doesn't operate that way. Whoever is not against us is for us, he says. Now, I want to circle back to the narrative context of our gospel reading. I mentioned that Jesus has been ratcheting up the bar on what discipleship means. I'll also note that he is holding a child in his arms when he delivers this difficult message, the one about tearing out your eye, etc. His message immediately follows where we left off last Sunday, and in a brief recap of last week, remember that Jesus is traveling on foot. Right now he's going to Capernaum with his disciples, and those disciples are arguing amongst themselves about who is greatest who's best, who's first, and Jesus overhears their bickering. So when they make it into town and come to the house where they're going to stay, Jesus sits down in the middle of the room and calls over a child. And he holds the child and teaches his followers that whoever will be great among you, whoever will be first, will be servant of all. Just as countercultural now as it was then, Just a little uh, intermission there. <laughs> da, 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 da. All right, let's get back to it. Now, when we hear our gospel reading for today, Jesus still has that child in his arms. And he says, if you cause one of these little ones to stumble, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. Challenging words. Even if they're hyperbolic, they are no less challenging. So let us clearly hear the charge. We have a duty, a responsibility to care for the most vulnerable in our midst. And that must be the work of the church. We must also remember that Jesus, in word and deed, is always pointing to the kingdom of God. So seated with the child in this house, He's not simply shaming his disciples into better behavior or right action. He's saying that if you want to know what it's like to welcome God's reign and be part of God's kingdom on earth, consider what it means to welcome a child. Now we can think about this as the church, welcoming children. But for a moment, let's think about it as a parent, a parental perspective. What is it to welcome a child? It's the great joy of a love deeper than you ever thought possible. Right? Amen from my parents? <laughs> the joy of a love deeper than you ever thought possible combined with a newfound fragility and a heart that is always on the verge of breaking. No one is more vulnerable than a newborn baby. But that parent's heart has also never been more vulnerable. There's a beautiful, apt, and poignant saying that having a child is like having your heart walking around outside of your body. And Jesus wants us to know that's what it's like to welcome him and to welcome the kingdom of God in your life. 
a newfound fragility and a joy that is unimaginable. It's also a constant stream of insight gained by seeing the world through someone's eyes who's taking it all in for the first time. And an exhausting stream of questions that you're expected to answer. So welcoming a child for parents, for the church, is always to welcome a life-changing and frankly disruptive presence. And I don't just mean disruption by the rambunctious noise of little ones. I mean the disruption of all the ways that we argue over who is the greatest and our tendency to think everything is about us while simultaneously being overly concerned with other people's behavior. And friends, we don't have time for that. As Christians, we have better things to do, like loving one another. Yesterday at the St. Cross Women's Day, Holly Milburn Smith, who many of you know and love, led a discussion about transitions, life transitions. And she talked about taking care of her toddler as a working mom and just trying to get through the day. She contrasted her survival mode to our culture's obsession with self-improvement, which she has absolutely no time for nor interest in. Instead, she put together a helicopter puzzle 11 times the other day because her priority is giving her son her undivided attention as much as she can. And let's face it, whatever has your attention has you. Whatever has your attention has a hold on your life. So let's give our attention to God. Allow the Holy Spirit to interrupt your life with a new person, a new project or possibility, a new adventure with Jesus that will undoubtedly be full of joy and wonder and possibly heartache, but definitely meaning beyond measure. And if you see someone exercising demons, invite them into the fold because the church could use more of that. But in all seriousness, there is no greater privilege than serving the living God especially as a community of faith. So God bless you, St. Cross, and God bless your good works in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand as you are able as we reaffirm our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. All justice, love, and peace comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. Therefore, let us pray to God that we may receive God's love in our hearts as in our world, saying, put love within us, O God, write it on our hearts. We pray for the church and its leaders. May we proclaim the truth and share the good news. Give your church grace that each member may carry out their ministry faithfully. Put your love within us, O God. Write it on our hearts. We pray for the nations and kingdoms of this world, that they would be liberated from ways of violence and war. Have mercy on the victims of war, that they might receive compassion, and on those who perpetrate, perpetrate violence, that they might be converted to the ways of love. Put your love within us, O God. Write it on our hearts. We pray for the created order. May we protect and guard your earth, O God. May we recognize that majesty and splendor of all you have created and remember that our health as a people is bound up in the health of the waters, sky, and earth. Put your love within us, O God. Write it on our hearts. We pray for those who are pushed into the margins of our society, O oh God. Shine your love upon them that they might feel your compassion and companionship. Give us open hearts that welcome and open hands that touch. Teach us love that crosses boundaries and borders. Put your love within us, O oh God. Write it on our hearts. We pray, O oh God, for the sick and suffering and those in any need or trouble. May they know in their bodies and minds your powerful peace. You desire for all of creation to be free from disease and stigma. Make your grace known through your healing touch. We pray especially for those we name aloud or in our hearts. For the victims of the hurricane. Put your love within us, O oh God. Write it on our hearts. We pray, O oh God, for all those whom we love but see no longer. May your light perpetual to shine upon them. And those who mourn, receive your care and love through our companionship. We pray especially for those we name aloud or in our hearts. Put your love within us, O God. Write it on our hearts. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. The multitude of your mercies look with favor and compassion upon us and all people who turn to you for help. Write your love on our hearts that we might proclaim your love in word and action. For you are gracious and to you we give glory, creator, redeemer, sustainer, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us conf confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that, that we, we have, have sinned, sinned against, against you in thought, word, and deed, 
by, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. you. Greet one another with a sign of God's love. And while you are spreading the peace, if it was your birthday or anniversary in September, please come forward. Wanda. September birthday and anniversary. Wow, it, wow, a prolific month for joyful blessings. I'm gonna need your help, Josh. Okay, wow, okay, hold on, we're gonna have to scoot around, there you go. So I'm gonna guess anniversary and birthday. Anniversary, birthday, 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 birthday. Wanda's 95th birthday. <laughs> There will be cake afterwards to celebrate. <laughs> birthday, birthday, anniversary. Anniversary, anniversary. Well, wonderful. So, are you ready? St. Cross, we are so filled with signs of Christ's love right now. It is amazing. If you are new or visiting, we uh, are welcome. We are thankful to have you here and we welcome you. Uh, if you sign the book in the back of the church, we can send you a little welcome email just because we're glad you're here. But a special welcome to Adrian Danhauser, who was our speaker yesterday. and our preacher today, and we are very thankful for your friendship with Holly and writing a book so that it put you on our radar to have you with our inaugural Women's Day, which brings me to my second announcement. Marilyn Young, where are you? Yep, all right. No, 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 Marilyn, I'm not done. Stand back up, stand back up. I said this yesterday, but I'm going to say it again. Marilyn came to us probably almost a year ago and said, I have this vision for a Women's Day. And I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, go find some people and get a committee together. So if Marilyn emailed you, called you, asked you to do something, would you please stand up? Oh, there, yeah, yeah. A huge thank you. A huge thank you to everyone that made our uh, first Women's Day in recent memory a huge success. So thank you. 
Let's see, Sunday Bible study has begun again. So if you would like to join the clergy for Bible study, you are welcome to do so. Quinn, your mom and dad might still be, yep, gotcha, thank you. <laughs> Just want children to be reunited with their parents. It's kind of important. So uh, Sunday Bible study has begun again. We will be, clergy will be in the guild room at 9 a.m. Uh, let me see what else do I have. Youth Choir is continuing to grow. Thank you, Miss Candace. You just get better and better every time. If your children are interested in Youth Choir, please see Miss uh, Candace. So uh, before I get to our final two announcements, next week is our St. Francis Day celebration. You will have no pew cushions and there will be many animals. So if you don't like animals, this is your chance to go check out a neighboring parish, but I suggest if you're going to an Episcopal one, you look at their website to see if they're doing animals too. So, um, but this is your reminder, bring your pets next Sunday. We bless all pets. And, um, and then we're gonna have a photo booth afterwards and we're gonna have dog and cat treats and we're gonna have, are we having agility maybe? Yeah, we're gonna have a little agility if you have dogs. So, or if your cat likes an agility station, I, I'm, I have no grief either way. Um, last two announcements. Today is the continuation of Hermosa Beach's 90254 locale, which means Oktoberfest or locale 90254, anywhere, whatever we are. Um, so, we are sponsoring the one, the only, yodeling contest tonight. So, um, we have members of our choir who will be judging. Thank you very much. But I am, this is my inviting you all down to Oktoberfest for Hermosa Beach. You know I feel strongly about supporting local, and this is an opportunity to do so. Last but not least. Uh, if you have turned on the news, you know that there is much devastation across the eastern seaboard in the south. Uh, that includes one of my closest friends from seminary, the dean of the cathedral in Asheville, which right now they think is probably completely um, uh, non-serviceable. Um, if you would like to make a donation to Episcopal Relief and Development, you may do so online at your little giving QR code on the back. Uh, you can go, there may not be a drop down for ERD yet, Episcopal Relief and Development, but you can go to non-pledge other giving and if it goes in today for that, that's what it will go for. Um, you can put it, uh, money in an envelope uh, in your pew and write ERD on it for Episcopal Relief and Development. And when Episcopal Relief and Development goes into an area that has been hit, you do not need to be Episcopalian. They provide relief for everybody. And this is also my time for my ongoing public service announcement. When there are disasters, please, please, please do not send stuff. What emergency relief people need is money so that they can buy what is needed in an area and they do not end up with parking lots full of clothes and blankets and pet food, et cetera. So please, I ask you, if you would like to contribute to hurricane relief, you do so via dollars and you can do that either with us or some other organization you care about, but please know that ERD will go to help all people. Thank you. Honor the Lord with your whole being and offer as sacrifice the first fruits of all your work.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body 
for we all share the one bread. This is the banquet of the Lamb. It is made ready for those who love God and for those who want to love God more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been here long, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed, come, because it is the Lord who invites you. It is God's will that those who want to know God should meet God here.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of the ocean wave be with you. Peace of the ocean breeze surround you. The peace of the quiet earth be in you. The peace of the night stars cover you. The deep peace of the Son of Peace be always with you. The blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer be with you now and always. Amen. In the name of Christ. Amen. 